Hey everybody, Gina DeLuca here. Um, so the painting that I did yesterday did not turn out as I had planned. Um, it came out way better than I uh, had planned and I cannot use it as a background because I don't have the heart to paint over it. Uh, I got tons of cells, there was no silicone. I was going for a gradient pour and uh, it really just wound up being um, just, it was tons of cells, better cells than I've ever gotten using silicone. And uh, there will be no silicone cleanup, which is the best part. So I thought that I would try it again, see what happened. I'll either wind up with a gradient pour or perhaps something similar to what I just got. Um, I was running out of some of the paint, so I had to improvise a bit. Um, I am using the Basics Dioxazine Purple, Basics Prism Violet, the Magenta uh, is a mix of the Quinacridone Magenta from Basics and or Liquitex Basics and the Artist Loft uh, Deep Magenta. I just ran out of my favorite color. Wow. Um, the orange, yesterday I used a uh, green that was a mix of a couple of colors. This is um, a mix of the magenta and cadmium yellow light hue. And then I also have the straight cadmium. I used this measuring cup yesterday. This um, this canvas calls for 25 ounces of paint for coverage. This is a 24 by 30. And this cup holds uh, roughly 24 to 25 ounces. I am going to lay down a base coat. I always do because A, it helps your paint slide around. Uh, it gives it a surface to move on, otherwise it will be sticking to the canvas. And if you do get cells, the cells will break up because the bottom layer is sticking to the canvas. You want it to slide around on top of your canvas. Also, should a mishap happen, you can always scrape it all together and a lot of times it will sell up again and you can just spread it back out. That's what happened with this painting. Um, it just wound up being a very dark mess and I scraped it all together. Um, I was intending on just scraping the paint off and then I noticed all the cells popping up in the pool in the center that I had made. And I said, well, let's go for it, see what happens. And that happened. So, uh, two good reasons to lay down a base coat. Okay. So, the idea yesterday was that um, I wanted the darkest part to be in the center with it getting lighter towards the edges because I was going for a gradient. Uh, so I will try that again today. And two things that I did a little differently yesterday than what I usually do. Um, usually I put a little bit of alcohol in each color paint to help pop the bubbles. Um, I did not do that yesterday. And I also made my paints a little bit thinner than I typically do. Uh, this one thickened up a little bit. I use a mix of uh, Floetrol and water. It's 10% Floetrol. And the rest is water. Uh, 
Um, so yeah, so I made the paints a little bit thinner than I usually do. Uh, one of them I had made just a little thin and it is better for them to all be the same consistency. So I made them all just a little bit thin. I could have added some Floetrol to thicken it up, but it was an experiment. So, uh, all right, so we will start with the dark colors, because whatever is on the bottom of your cup, theoretically, uh, will wind up in the center of your puddle. Yesterday, the purple was, was on the bottom, and when I poured it, all you saw was purple. Didn't look like there was going to be any yellow showing up. Um, so, there's about five ounces of paint in each of these cups, so I know that these five cups will give me 25 ounces of paint. And this measuring cup will be very, very full. I was also pretty careful about the layering. So as I mentioned, I was going for a gradient pour. I want to paint a portrait on top of the pour. And so I was looking for a gradient kind of background. I'm gonna take a mention to or take a moment to mention the uh, my Facebook group. Go make some art. Um, Y'all are awesome. The ones who have joined this group, uh, everyone is very kind to one another, very helpful, and there are people from all over the world on that group. So. Um, I know people in countries other than the United States have a hard time getting Floetrol. And so one of the very common questions is, what can I use in place of the Floetrol? And uh, because we have so many members from all over the world, they are able to be very helpful with that. And really just some beautiful artwork being shown. I love seeing what y'all do. I get inspired by the things that you guys post. Okay. So the cup holds a little over 25 ounces. Okay, I'm going to put this out of the way for a moment. Okay, let's lay down a base coat. Um, for people who are contemplating working on a big canvas, 
and are afraid to. Uh, I recommend before you do it, do a dry run, literally a dry run where you um, decide how you're gonna tilt your canvas to get used to the feel of, of using the cups as pivots or however you're trying to, to do it. Um, if you're gonna have a partner help you, uh, it is good to run through it with them to come up with your system of, okay, let's go this way, now your way, now to your left and all that stuff. I've done, oh, you rat, there's a hair. This house is just nothing but cat hair. Always keep some very pointy tweezers handy. Um, so where was I? Right, so you have the option of having a partner help you. I've done several 30 by 40s. Uh, by myself, I didn't have uh, an extra set of hands, so you kind of develop a bit of a technique for doing it on your own. So I like to use the cups to pivot the canvas. And I've gotten pretty good at balancing the canvas. I can actually balance it on one corner. And that's not to say there are never mishaps. So make sure that you don't have any full paint cups sitting anywhere near while you're going to be doing this. Because sometimes things do go awry. Okay. So yesterday I also started with a bit of a puddle of white in the center. Just give me some extra movement. So again, my purple has taken over. And I'm pouring it pretty quickly. I don't want those lines. Except for my little Fibonacci spiral. <laughs> I attempt at it. Okay, I can breathe for a second. I don't breathe when I'm doing those pores. <laughs> Will you work today? Yay! This, um, when I'm pouring this out, I can see a lot of bubbles getting in there, um, possibly because of how quickly I'm pouring it out. But I'm trying to not go for so much of a ring pour effect. Um, so I see some cells popping up. Well, this is exciting. Uh, why do you taunt me? Okay, 
Well, I think I've given up on my torch. That's a shame because it was making cells pop up. Uh, <laughs> this thing works when it feels like it. I think, uh, I think it's time. I have to let it go. All right, so let's get stretching. Um, I would like to avoid those white corners if possible. Okay, I'm kind of shifting the weight a little to the center. I don't want to lose that yellow. to the center. If you make sure that the weight of your paint is centered before you tilt, you will have a much better chance of getting these giant juicy cells and keeping them in their cell shape so they don't get all of those funky strange looking uh, cell shapes. Okay. Whew. These cells are huge. <laughs> wow. Wow, wow, wow. No silicone. I may be abandoning silicone, y'all. It is a mess to clean up. I don't like it. So, losing my cups, losing my cups.
And you want to do it slowly. And you will pop your cells. Again, this is not something that I will be wanting to paint over. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh. I think the, the piece yesterday I was saying was my new favorite piece. I think this might be my new, new favorite piece. It's like, this looks like some kind of crazy stairway. I almost wish that the corners were black. But, huh. It's gonna be hard with all of that white that's gone up in there. Should I do it? I can almost hear you guys yelling. Just can't make out what you're saying. Are they saying yes? Are they saying no? I'm not loving the white is doing something a little funky. Right on the edge there. So I'm debating. Do I blow it with a straw? Feather it out. Eh, but I kind of like the structure of this. Okay, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm not loving the white. I would rather have white as the background on this because if I used black, then the um, the dark would just mute all of the colors. So using a white background makes it pop a little more. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna scrape some of this white off. Come in with some black. <clears throat> All right, so I'm just gonna kind of just cover up and bring that. I don't want to like push it out. I don't want 
this whole thing to shift on me though. Yeah, I don't want this composition to change at all. So I can always come in uh, after it's dry and just touch up these edges. You know, sometimes your uh, paint comes out of the cup and you just say, I need this color negative space. That's just all there is to it. And I feel like this one was just screaming for black, so. It's always good to have your uh, basic colors. Pre-mixed, ready to go for whenever you need it in an emergency, like this one. Okay, you guys, well, that is uh, the second painting with no silicone and loads of cells. Um, my camera shut off. I did go in and blow the edges with a straw a little bit. I would have liked to have uh, kept those cell structures, but I felt that the black would look better on the background than the white. Um, so I made a sacrifice for the overall painting. So well, that's it. Uh, please join our group, go make some art, post your painting photos in there, and uh, please like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, so that's it for me. Have a great day, y'all. Go make some art.